Okay, welcome back to Textbook Answers. This time we're going to be moving on to activity 5.4. Now in this one we've got two questions. First of all, we're going to be looking at um, weak passwords and identifying the ones between these. Um, 5A to E, and then we're going to be looking at A and B of question 2, where we've got an airport uh, that uses a computer system control security, flight bookings, passenger lists, and administration and customer services. Question one, which of the following are weak passwords and which are strong passwords? Explain your decision in each case. So for A, well, this is just a date. So 25th of May, 2000, that might be somebody's birthday. Um, so that's no good at all. That's, that would be considered to be a weak password. B, um, again, uh, we've just got a, a number in this time, but we've got the word password. Now password, in whatever connotation, is one of the top 10 uh, passwords used um, by the majority of people. So a very, very weak password and easy to guess. C and D. Now these are both very strong passwords, especially C, because C does have um, symbols, it does have upper and lowercase letters, it does have numbers, and it is above eight characters. This is really essential. Above eight characters is what you should be looking at. Um, obviously D's got eight characters as well, so that's great. Now E, Again, we've just got a sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and a letter at the end of it. Again, this is a very weak password and potentially would be very easy to guess. Okay, so to recap, A and B would be no good, too weak. Um, C and D, yes, excellent, strong passwords. Eight characters are above, and E, yes, an easy password to guess. Okay. Question two, an airport uses a computer system to control security, flight bookings, passenger lists, administration, and customer services. Describe how it is possible to ensure the safety of the data on the system so that senior staff can see all the data while customers can only access flight times, arrivals and departures, and duty-free offers. So let's have a look at A. So let's use levels of access. Um, we could have level one, and this is for passengers. So they can only access what we've just said in terms of arrivals and departure times and duty-free offers. We could have level two, and this would be for airport staff. And this would allow them to do the job more efficiently in terms of maybe customer information or specific information relating to their jobs. Level three would be more for senior staff and people in charge. And this would be all the information that is available at that particular airport. Now, all this information, you would use um, user IDs to log on and um, specific passwords that were set up, um, again, by the user, but controlled overall by the senior staff. And then, of course, part B, describe how the airport can guard against malware attacks from outside and also from customers using the airport services. Well, we need strong passwords. For these user IDs that we've set up, we need to create strong passwords, which is what we mentioned in part A. Also we'll, need to look, also, we'll need to look at um, scanning for malware, um, anything that's maybe been downloaded. To prevent this, we don't allow plug-in devices such as USB memory sticks, uh, flash drives. We don't allow those to be connected to the computers in the airport. We could set up a firewall. Again, if there was access to the internet and any of the computers, Obviously, we want to protect um, the computers from any uh, any malware getting in. So, obviously, virus checkers, malware. Um, but we could also set up a, a system where we have no internet access at all. And that might be a lot more beneficial. Do they need to access the internet on the, um, on the computers in the airport? I'm not sure. So, that would be it. So, that's it. That's activity 5.4 answered. So, thank you very much indeed. I will see you next time. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I would be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.